So earlier this year, I already planned a trip to Hawaii and luckily DJI released the Mini 4 Pro just a few days before our departure, which gave me the opportunity to test out all the features and test out the Mini 4 Pro itself and see how this is as a true travel drone. So in today's video, I'm going to run you through everything there is to know about the Mini 4 Pro as a travel drone, the pros, the cons, and give you my honest opinion on whether or not you should get this or the Mini 3 Pro or even keep the Mini 3 Pro if you already have that and is the new active track 360 any good or is it just a gimmick how long is the average flight time and those waypoints actually work properly and how is it straight out of the box these are only a few of the topics i will cover in today's video so make sure to stick around for the unfiltered truth about the mini 4 pro now before i dive into the mini 4 pro as a travel drone i also want to say that all the clips you're about to see has been color graded with my signature LEDs, which i've spent years on correcting and these LUTs does not only work for the Mini 4 Pro, but any camera you might have. I also made these compatible with every software and device, so you don't have to waste money on new LUTs for each new device being released. My signature LUTs will last you for centuries and you will never have to buy LUTs again. So if you want to make your footage look unique, link down below. Now the Mini 4 Pro has a weight of 249 grams, which not only makes it easy to travel with, but also comfortable, especially when you carry some extra batteries. For me, I don't notice much difference between this and the Mavic 3 though, since my backpack is usually packed with gear and when I do hikes, it's usually around 10 kilos. So it wouldn't be much difference between the Mini 4 Pro and the Mavic 3. But if you are the person that carries your drone controller and some extra batteries, the difference between a Mini 4 Pro and 4 batteries and the Mavic 3 or Air 3 and 4 batteries will be significant. Now, one thing I hate though is the new prop guard. It takes time to take off because because the props are always all over the place and you need to align the props properly so you don't bend them. So I've actually ended up carrying the Mini 4 Pro without the prop guard and worst case I can use some Velcro just to secure them in place. And I also have this from the Mini 3 Pro which works perfectly with the Mini 4 as well. But this I think it's also too tight actually when I mount it so it feels like you're, you're gonna crush the drone. So I don't really like the new included uh, prop guard and I wish it was a little bit easier, a little bit different, but that's my personal opinion. I also wish DJI made the Mini 4 Pro with snap-on propellers instead of relying on a Phillips screwdriver and the Phillips screws here in order to fasten uh, or replace the propeller. This would also make traveling with the Mini 4 Pro more satisfying and easier. But I do love the silent flight experience that you get with the Mini 4 Pro and you can barely hear it when you take off, when you fly and when you're coming down to land. So to me, that's a huge advantage with the Mini 4 Pro and I also had the same experience with the Mini 3 Pro. So there's no difference in, in decibels when it comes to these two drones. They seem to be identical when it comes to the noise level. Now in terms of battery, I'm getting about 24 to 25 minutes of flight time on average. Sometimes I peaked 28 to 29 minutes, but this also comes down to wind and how much you push the motors. So when I was flying in the forest, for example, I was getting high numbers on the battery, but as soon as I flew in the open where I experienced a lot of wind, the flight time got reduced by a few minutes. One thing I do like though, is the fact that the Mini 3 Pro batteries are compatible with the Mini 4 Pro. However, using the Mini 3 batteries will push the Mini 4 above the 249 gram limit. So make sure you know this before you fly in open places, near people or buildings. But as a battery life flying all crazy in sports mode, I was getting about 18 minutes of flight time, also considering the time it takes for the drone to come back home as well. And in normal cinema mode at close range, I had an average of 24-ish minutes of flight time with moderate wind. Now moving over to the interesting part, the camera and the image quality coming from this drone. The Mini 4 Pro got some new technology. It has an optimized 1 over 1.3 inch SEMA sensor with a fixed aperture of f1.7, which provides a better image compared to the Mini 3 Pro and is similar to the Air 3. 
Now, I already have an uh, in-depth uh, review of the Mini 4 Pro, so this is gonna be more of that travel review and how this is to travel with. But if you wanna know all the specs and all of that, make sure to check out the video down in the description below. So let me start by showing you a short sequence I shot with the Mini 4 Pro in Hawaii. And I've been testing the HLG color profile as well as the D-Log M10B color profile, and everything has been color graded with my signature lights. Let's have a look. So what do you think of the quality coming from the Mini 4 Pro? To me, it's just wow. It's amazing what DJI managed to squeeze into this little drone. However, the footage could be better with the use of some ND filters, which wasn't available when I first picked this up. Now, the reason you might need a few ND filters is because the Mini 4 Pro has a fixed aperture of f1.7, which is bright. This means a lot of light will come through the lens, and in order to control this light, you will need sunglasses for your drone to keep the shutter speed down. So if you're not using ND filters, your footage might end up looking way too oversaturated, way too sharpened if you don't know how to adjust the settings accordingly. So all the shots captured with the Mini 4 Pro in the sequence you just watched was shot entirely using auto settings without the use of ND filters. So what I mean is that you would need ND filters to make this easier for yourself, especially if you're more of that run and gun type of style shooter. It is of course doable without ND filters, but for the convenience of a smoother workflow and to get the optimal image quality, an ND filter is a must. And thankfully I came home to my set of ND filters for the Mini 4 Pro from uh, Freewell and these are the ND filters I've been using on my Mini 3 Pro, Mavic 3 Classic and or all my previous drones as well. Freewell is my go-to when it comes to ND filters and I highly recommend uh, testing them out or getting a, a bundle like this. It will make your footage look even better because you can control that shutter speed which means you're not gonna get that oversaturated and over sharpened image. So I'll leave a link to the filters down in the description below if you want to check them out. Now, another huge factor for me is size. I've been traveling all over the island of Oahu with the Air 2S, Mavic 3, Abara, DJI FPV, Mini 2, Mini 3, and now the Mini 4 Pro. And there's one thing I can say for sure, the low weight and small form factor and small size of the Mini 4 Pro is something I'll never trade. It's amazing how small and compact this is and the whole setup with the DJI RC2 controller gets you going in a few seconds. So the Mini 4 Pro is something I wouldn't trade for a big drone. It's the perfect travel companion in my opinion. So this is going to be a long lasting drone and I said the same thing with the Mini 3 Pro but I still have this, I will still keep this but this is now my backup drone in case you know, something happens with the Mini 4 Pro. But we're gonna come back to that later in this video, why I decided to stick with the Mini 4 Pro and why this is a better drone for me. But talking about the RC2 controller, this is amazing. It boots up really fast and I haven't actually experienced any lag so far. And with the new OcuSync 4.0, the signal is much more stable and you would actually have to put in some effort to lose the signal. So for the overall experience using this versus the RC1 controller, it's a different world. But one thing to note though, the RC2 controller does only have 700 nits as well. So it has the same amount of brightness as the RC1 controller, which might be a bummer for a lot of people. Personally, I don't really mind that lower nits because I'm so used to it coming from the previous RC1 controller. But there's also different accessories you could buy to make your experience better if you struggle to see the screen in bright sunlight. What I really love about this is the fact that I can use it 
a full brightness of 700 nits regardless of temperature, which is something I've struggled with in the past when I used my phone as a screen. So to be able to fly at 700 nits without thinking about overheating or the screen dimming down is a huge advantage for me when I'm traveling to warmer places. The controller is also pretty lightweight. It's only a little bit heavier, not much, but just a tiny bit heavier than the RC1 controller but not something that you will notice over time. And I can honestly say that this is by far the best controller I've used so far. And if you're considering getting the Mini 4 Pro, I can highly recommend getting the RSC2 controller as a combo with the Mini 4 Pro because it will make your life so much easier. Now, traveling around the island of Oahu, I was able to test out all the features of the Mini 4 Pro. Waypoints, cruise control, active track, point of interest, night mode, you name it. And this time I also skipped out on quick shots and master shots because I usually don't use these when I'm out traveling. And honestly, I don't think they are that great either. So I prefer to use other features or fly manually. But let's start with active track. This has to be the biggest hype along with waypoints when it comes to the release of the Mini 4 Pro. And man, the active track is bad. It's awful and I am so disappointed. Hopefully though it will be improved but as of now it is awful. But of course in open fields it performs decent but I found it to struggle quite a lot when tracking myself doing hikes and at times I question whether or not I am a human because it only seemed to pick up on my wife. The Mini 4 Pro is also all over the place and it seems to randomly float around me regardless of my selection and when I set a different position it seems to take the longest route. So looking at this shot right here, the drone is tracking my right side and when I wanted to move it between right and back, it suddenly decided to do a 360 fly around to that position. It's really strange, but I do hope and I do think this will be corrected with a better optimized firmware in the future. It also struggles to keep track of the subject, which means you'll end up with a pulsing footage where the drone is flying forward then hovers for a few seconds before it picks up on the target again. I also find it way too sensitive when it comes to tracking and the direction of where it tracks and hope that this can be smoothened out with a firmware update as well because when it's tracking my back it keeps going to the left and right as soon as I turn my back a little bit and I think it's too aggressive on that part so I want to see this smoothened out so it kind of floats more dynamically instead of just you know always trying to stay on your back you're going to end up having tracked footage which you don't want to use because it looks awful so from all the tracking that i've done there's only a few parts here and there which is actually usable which is a shame but thankfully we have waypoints and waypoints is something i think is better especially for hikes or if you want some cinematic shots where you want the movement to be silky smooth so on this hike to the pink pillbox i started with active track but since this failed on me, I went over to waypoints and made three different points in three different places. I also changed the speed according to how fast we were going and the last step was to hit start. Now, once we got closer to the top, I added a new set of points and had the drone circle around the first pillbox here with different settings to each waypoint and the result came out amazing. This is something I missed with the Mini 3 Pro and I honestly think waypoints alone is a huge reason to buy the Mini 4 Pro. Another example here, let's say you're out traveling and you want to have the same two clips for let's say a cinematic video on YouTube and Instagram. Instead of cropping the footage or manually try to fly the same route in both horizontal and vertical aspect, you can just create some points with waypoints and then fly using the normal 16 by 9 aspect and when your flight is done, you 
you can actually redo the exact same flight path, but then switch over to vertical mode. And now you will have two identical shots in two different aspects without doing anything, since everything is done by the Mini 4 Pro itself. I think this is just awesome. In the Mini Drone, I, it's fantastic. So let me know your thoughts on Waypoints and the Mini 4 Pro down in the comments below. And also if you're brand new here and you like the video so far, make sure to drop a like that will help this video reach more people in order to help others find out whether or not the Mini 4 Pro is the right drone for them. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do that as well. That would be appreciated and it really helps me make these unsponsored and unpaid videos. Now, point of interest is also another hands-free feature I like to use when I'm out traveling. So the only thing you want to do is to mark your screen and then wait for the location lock. So when you mark something, you can just fly the drone a little bit to the left or the right for a few seconds. And until you see this icon right here, which is the location lock. When this is locked, you can select point of interest, or if you want to manually control the drone, you can select spotlight. Personally, I like to use point of interest and I can control the drone in the same way as spotlight. The only difference is that the Mini 4 will fly to either side by itself and I can manually adjust the speed prior or during the flight. Oh, and here's a shark, by the way. I'm not sure what type of shark this is, but from my knowledge, it looks like a tiger shark. This is the first time I've seen such a big shark in open waters and this close to shore. It definitely got me thinking as my next location wasn't too far away. And my plan was to jump in the drink with my X3. But luckily, Mr. Frank kept me safe. Now back to the Mini 4 and night mode. Now usually I don't fly my drones at night, but with the optimized sensor and the new night mode added to the Mini 4 Pro, I just had to give it a try. Looking back at the footage, it looks amazing. Even the photos looks amazing and there's little grain to be seen. I'm actually pretty impressed with the low light capabilities of this drone. But another important thing to know though is that the avoidance sensors will be turned off when you select a night mode. Now, as the sun started to rise, I also tested the 10-bit HDR in both HLG and the Log M color profile, and man, this looks stunning. It's definitely something I can see myself using more of in the future when I'm capturing sunsets and sunrises. Now, when it comes to color profiles, I'm actually not sure which one I like more. I've been shooting a lot with HLG as well as the D-Log M color profile, and to be honest, the HLG profile looks stunning and there's almost no correction needed. The only thing I've done is to add my signature LUTs just to add that extra spice. But other than that, the HLG might just be my new favorite profile. Also snapping a few photos here, the quality is also good. And here's a few comparison shots with the Mini 3 Pro. And they both look good to me. And when we punch into 500%, there's not much difference when taking photos in daylight. As for night photos, here's a few side by side versus the Mini 3 Pro. Let me know what you think down below. Which do you think look better? Is it the Mini 3 or is it the Mini 4? Now, another feature I've been excited about is the ability to shoot 4K 100 FPS slow motion as well as 4K 60 HDR. I think these are the two features that makes it for me along with waypoints. Being able to shoot 4K slow motion videos with a mini drone is something I've been looking forward to and the image at 100 FPS looks so good. And of course, getting these waves in slow motion is something I can watch over and over. I mean, look at this. It is so satisfying. So traveling around the island of Oahu with the Mini 4 Pro, has it been better than the Mini 3 Pro? 
Well, yes. As of image quality, I still think they look quite alike, but what makes it for me is the ability to use waypoints as well as 4K slow motion, HLG, and D log M. These are the main features that makes the Mini 4 Pro stand out for me. Cruise control is also a nice addition, but when I'm out traveling, I think waypoints is the way to go for more dynamic shots. Is it a better travel drone than the Mini 3 Pro? Well, if you don't need the sensors, waypoints, 4K slow motion, or the color profile, then no. The Mini 3 Pro can also track you in somewhat the same ways, you just have to be more careful. You can also use spotlight and point of interest to create some unique looking shots, and the bright lens makes your night shots look decent enough. But if you want to create more by doing less, or maybe you want to get your first drone, the Mini 4 Pro will definitely be my recommendation. To me, this is the perfect travel companion which makes it easier than ever to shoot high quality footage from above. So there you have my travel review of the Mini 4 Pro. If you're looking to get your hands on one, there is a link down in the description below along with my signature LUTs and my free cheat sheets for the Mini 3 and Mini 4. I'm also curious to know your thoughts on the Mini 4 Pro. Will you be getting one? And if you already have one, how has your experience been so far? Let me know in the comments below. So with that said, Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.